Hey Optimancers, Chris here. So a new video was released where Todd Kendrick sat down with Chris Perkins to discuss the new Dungeon Master's Guide that's going to be released in 2024. And originally I was going to do a reaction video, but I ended up abandoning that because it was mainly just a video of me playing their video and watching it with very little to say. What I did note is this is a 24 minute video with what I figure is about 10 minutes worth of actual information. And they jump around a lot with that information. So instead, what I decided I would do is take notes, get all the information, then I'll present it in a more organized and condensed way. And I think I can give you all the information presented in what I hope will be about a 10 minute video. At the end of the video, there was a little bit discussed of the new monster manual. So I guess I'll start with that and get it out of the way. So first off, the new monster manual will be alphabetized. So the current monster manual has like categories and then it's alphabetized within the category. So if you want to find the gelatinous cube, you need to look under O for ooze. In the new monster manual, it will be found under G. There will be more monsters. Now he doesn't say in this video how many, but from other sources, I'm under the understanding it's going to be around 500 monsters. Though the exact number doesn't seem like it's been pinned down yet. But the focus on the new monster manual is going to be about filling gaps, particularly at higher challenge ratings. So the current monster manual has a cultist and they're intended to be used in low levels of play. But now there's going to be like a pumped up cultist for each tier of play. He talks about how some kinds of monsters like Fey and oozes don't have representation at higher challenge ratings and they want to fill those gaps. As for the monsters in the current monster manual, they will all be reprinted there. They are all going to have the same challenge rating that they have now, but they will have some redesign and in some cases, particularly at higher challenge ratings, a rebalancing to make them fit those challenge ratings better. He discussed how higher challenge rating monsters in the monster manual aren't powerful enough for those challenge ratings and they plan to juice them up to be a better challenge for those higher level groups. He also promised new art for everything, not just the monster manual, but across all three core books. Sounds like it will be entirely new art, and I'm guessing there will be more than ever. I would be very surprised if there isn't a piece of art for every monster listed in the Monster Manual. And that's all we got about the Monster Manual. So here's what we were told about the new Dungeon Master's Guide. So first, it was made clear what their goals are for the new Dungeon Master's Guide. The theme that Chris Perkins kept going back to was organization. He discussed how the very first part of the current Dungeon Master's Guide is about creating your own campaign world. He figured that was kind of throwing a new DM into the deep end. He also said the two most common pieces of feedback he gets about the current Dungeon Master's Guide are either that the person was unaware of information that's in the Dungeon Master's Guide, or they were aware but have trouble finding it. He provided the example of the firearms rules. Some people don't even know there are rules for firearms in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Others know the rules are there, but they don't know where to find them. I thought this was an interesting example because some of the information that came out of the Creator Summit suggests that the firearms rules actually might be in the player's handbook, but I guess we'll see. He also discussed how in 2013 and 2014, as they were writing the current Dungeon Master's Guide, the teams were small, the budgets were tight, and there just wasn't a lot of time because they were releasing three core books at the same time and they were probably more focused on the player's handbook than the Dungeon Master's Guide. And for the 2024 Dungeon Master's Guide, he now has more time, 10 years worth of feedback and play experience, a bigger team, and presumably a bigger budget. So here's how the next Dungeon Master's Guide is going to be laid out. Before we start, Chris Perkins reiterated that this Dungeon Master's Guide is for 5th edition. Don't call it 5.5 folks, it's 5th edition. Anyways, let's go over the chapters that will be in the Dungeon Master's Guide for 5.5. So there will be eight chapters total, then some appendices. Now he mentioned two of them. I don't know if there will be just two or more. And there will be a poster map, but he didn't say what the poster map would be of. That is to be a surprise. Chapter one, the basics. So in this chapter, the reader will be introduced to the concept of DMing and will be provided very basic information and strategies about how to DM. The reader will be told about DM screens, what they are, what they're for, and how to use them. They'll be told about the various dice, what he called the fundamentals for running the game. 
He also discussed how the book will encourage DMs to embrace their own style rather than try to emulate like Matt Mercer or anything like that, and how your style will automatically conform to the different groups of players because of the social dynamic of the game. Chapter 2. He didn't name it, but he did say what it would cover. It's going to cover some of the common issues that can come up in games and how to deal with those issues as they come up. He discussed providing specific examples along with tried and true solutions. He says that some of the information that ended up in Xanathar's or Tasha's is going to be ported over to the new Dungeon Master's Guide. The example he gave is rules for Session Zero that are in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and I would hazard the guess that they will be in Chapter 2. He also discussed some advice for DMs about improvising and be willing to put aside what you've prepared, like if the players go off on a tangent, as they often do, and how to reintroduce that prepared content at a later time. Chapter 3 is going to be a rules compendium, so this will be an alphabetized list of rules, and he said it's all the stuff that's not in the player's handbook. Again, he used firearms as an example. He said it will be F for firearms. He was silent about what would happen if you looked at G for guns or R for rifles, though. Chapter 4 will be a section on adventure building. For this chapter, Chris Perkins discussed what he called a new approach of show, not tell. There will be actual examples of adventures, but not like a published adventure, like an adventure that would be created for an evening's worth of play that would require minimal prep time. So lots of focus on exactly how much preparation is actually required to run a session, along with examples you can use or adapt. Then chapter five will be campaign building. So he says this chapter is going to include rules for creating your own campaign, but it's also going to have an actual example campaign that you could run for yourself or adapt if you like. Again, it's this show not tell approach. Chapter six will be the cosmology, and he didn't go into any details on this chapter, but I would assume it will cover the various planes of existence, such as the prime material plane, where most adventures take place, the ethereal plane, the astral plane, then all the specific planes like the abyss, the elemental planes, etc. Chapter seven will be magic items. So the change here that Chris Perkins talks about is an increase to the number of common magic items. He said the common magic items from Xanathar's are going to be printed here, along with more common items they are creating to what he called fill gaps. I'm guessing that all the current magic items will be reprinted there. I don't know if there will be redesigns, and I don't know if there will be anything added beyond common magic items. Could be, but we don't know yet. Then chapter 8, and he says this is a surprise. So who knows? Finally, we will have appendices, and he mentioned two appendices. First, he said there will be a map appendix. So he mentions that one of the first regrets he shared with Jeremy Crawford after the 2014 Dungeon Master's Guide went to print was that he wished they could have included more maps. So the new Dungeon Master's Guide will have an appendix of maps that are intended to be easily adaptable for our games. The other glossary he mentioned is a lore glossary. So this will be an alphabetized list of the iconic characters and locations for D&D that tend to be casually mentioned in D&D products, and each will be given a brief description. So under O, there will be an entry for Orcus, and that will presumably tell you that Orcus is a demon lord that lords over the undead and has a cool and deadly wand. So that is what the new Dungeon Master's Guide is going to look like. And that's pretty much all the information from this video condensed for you. So now I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon.